。是的，目前这个雨确实是越来越大。我举的这个伞，这个伞的雨滴也是越来越大。那么昨天其实上海申花取消赛前的一个训练呢，也差不多是这样一个雨量。但是由于目前这个赛程的密集啊，今天这场比赛呢是大概率不会延迟，也不会取消的，因为。呃，在来到这个赛场之前呢，我是有咨询一下这个官方的。那目前我看到整个场地来说呢，呃，还是没有太多的积水，但是呃，有很多工作人员是目前站在我的场后在进行草皮的一个修补。那不管怎么样，这场比赛到目前为止啊、呃，马上就要开赛了。那我觉得呃，双方球员在这样的一个恶劣的环境下。肯定会消耗更多的体能，另外呢，在这样的一个环境下也会更加容易受伤，所以也是希望这一场比赛双方的球员可以小心、小心再小心。
。那个教练你好，请问球队目前的状态怎么样？对，我我看到是 form is your team now. Everybody s fit. We have one, only one、um, sub、um, suspended player. 大家身体状况都不错。我们就是有一个停赛的。And the form is,、uh, yeah, like last match, we're okay. The boys are doing great, so that's it. That's football. 呃，球队的状态跟上一场很相似吧？大家都练得不错。嗯。好的，那针对这场比赛，您做了哪些布置呢 ？What kind of arrangements you have made for special for this game? We're gonna play with 12 players. 我们只能上十二个人。没有，没有，没有。<laughs> Now you know we know the 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 the, the force of、uh, Shenhua, but we also know their weakness.、Uh, so we're going to try to、um, avoid their force and make use of their weakness. Ah, we know Shenhua quite well. We know their weaknesses, we know their weaknesses, so we're going to avoid them. That's what we、uh, we worked on、uh, the last two days. Recently, these two days, we've been working. 就为此而而准备吧。好的，谢谢教练你好，请问球队目前的状态怎么样？呃，情况还可以吧，大家都看得到的，基本上才朝好的方向呃走吧。嗯。好的，那针对这场比赛，您做了哪些布置呢？呃，待会你场地上看吧，我们会全力以赴打好这个比赛的。啊。好的，谢谢。
Well, good evening and welcome back to the Chinese Super League. Beijing Guan on the road to take on Shanghai Shenhua today. The anthems are done. Let's meet the teams. Beijing Guan in a 4-4-2 today with the two strikers, Zhang Yuning and Samuel Adding Bengro of Nigeria. Midfield quartet of Zhang Shijie, Chi Zhangguo, Gao Tianyi, and Kang Sangu as we meet the referees. Tang Shunqi leads this crew that, of course has the option for VAR should the match require it at any point today. It is a crew that we often see needed to weigh in on the proceedings. Shanghai Shenhua, it is a 4-4-2 for them as well. Can play more like a 4-5-1 out of possession. Bao Jun, Wang Yi are the two changes to the back line. Ju Bao Jie brings in his services as the holding midfielder in this shape today. That is Stanley Menzo, the 59-year-old former Dutch international, six caps as a goalkeeper for the Dutch for the Surinamese-born gaffer. Behind the other touchline, Wu Jingui, another first-year man at the helm, 61 years of age. The Chinese has his side in a bit of a predicament at the moment, looking to snap a tricky run of form as they have not fared well in their last matches, to put it kindly. Four matches of their last five have resulted in a loss, including their game on Monday against the Tianjin Tigers, where they fell by two goals to one, meddling right now inside of the 10th position in the Chinese Super League table, on 36 points, 26 back of league leaders, Wuhan Three Towns. Underway, the Jinjiang Football Training Center Stadium. The visitors in their whites today with the green trim. 
Letters and numbers, they work from right to left in this first half of action. Shanghai Shenhua, the designated hosts, they wear their primarily blue with the red accents atop their socks. The white letters and numbers, they'll be working from left to right on your screen towards Ho Sen in the Beijing goal. Much different story for Beijing Guan, who find themselves sixth in the table, and that is joint sixth with Zhu Jiang Professional and the Henan Songsheng Lung Men. Four through six level on 46 points, only three back of Shanghai Port as they try to battle for that final Champions League playoff round position, the automatic berth for third, but it is quite the race atop the table. With only a few rounds remaining. Gao Tianyi, the once gap Chinese international, the first shot attempt of the match into a sea of blue. has been the pre-match team talk the past month or so has clearly worked from Stanley and his staff to be absolutely elated with how things have gone really in essence since their last match against Shanghai Shenhua if you were to put a turning point in the season the final fixture of August where they fell by two goals to nil came back and started August with excuse me started September with dra two draws in the month 3-1 win over the lowly Habai aside from that they have been near faultless only falling in that run to Wuhan three towns on the 8th of this month There's no doubt they're started, starting on the front fr foot. Attic Benro floated in well. Defensive header out for the first corner of the match. Know that a good start will be absolutely paramount for Eugene Gui's side. Well, you give the center back credit for keeping it away from the lunging attacking effort, but the danger is still there. Fantastic run in. That didn't miss much by much. Zhang Yuning. 22 caps for country. Five goals he has scored for the Chinese national team. A soaring header. Collision in midfield. Mr. Tang says play on. Yuhan Chao eludes his defender and has it returned. Bit of a heavy touch, just a titch too close to Bai Yang. Able to stab out with his right foot and make sure there is no smooth effort in and around. That last defender would have been in for an attempt and Ho Sen. He dropped out of the sky right onto the foot of Wang Haitian. Being driven away, kept wide. 
Step over the touchline and keep Shanghai Shenhua in the attacking third, deep inside enemy, enemy territory. Bit of a wake-up call conceding that early corner. Proper response from this his designated home side. Carelessly given away, Wu Shi turns in possession, surveys. A few very nice off-ball runs. That's just gonna be kept in. Turning, firing, deflected, it's a sitter. Pounced on, and absolutely no mistake, Wang Yi could not have waited that pass any better than they had done. A relentless effort to the byline to keep it in play. The defender, I don't think perhaps was expecting to do anything more than watch that ball roll over the line. That is the initial service from Yu Han Chao. And without that hustle, without that play, there is no goal. And three of the four defenders in white caught ball watching. Those arms in the air are of the desperation variety. Yang Shu just gets a touch to it. And it is easily capitalized on for the first goal of the match. Started on the back foot and responding brilliantly. Seeing themselves... Ahead in just the seventh minute of play, the sky's falling, but one side enjoying the rain a little bit more than the other at the moment. Brief pause as Ting Shun Ki speaks with the video assistant referee just to make sure that there is no reason to go, f uh, excuse me, go to the monitor and check. I haven't seen a conclusive angle to show me that the entirety of that ball has crossed the byline before it was kept in, but VAR will take their opportunity to do just that and make sure that it was indeed the right decision on field. And it might be the goalkeeper's right glove, Hosen, that prevents a clear and definitive angle Regardless of whether this stands or not, Beijing Guan has been given a massive wake-up call. It is the Italian-born Denny Wang Yi, who was the one to pounce, the former Juventus youth player. Video assistant referee is really taking a long time. It is given. The goal stands. Using the technology to confirm what the referee had seen, but I think it's a case of there was not one angle that showed without any doubt that the call on field was the wrong one. So Wang Yi's goal will stand, and it is 1-0 for Shanghai Shenhua. Less than 10 minutes into this match. It is good to see work ethic rewarded as it was on Shanghai Shenhua's opening goal. Maybe not quite the same pace to start the match, but from that corner they conceded. A little bit more decisive and imposing in this match.
I'm trying to stay dry, trying to stay warm. There will be plenty of those substitutes who will be called upon between now and the 90th. Sixth in the table, as I mentioned. Two one win on Monday. Guangzhou City. They had three or well, four designated home matches prior to that, and they only fell to Wuhan three towns. This meeting between the sides back in August, it was a first half goal for Shanghai Shenhua. Two, in fact, just five minutes apart. Yuhan Chao opened it in the 31st minute. Christian Basogog converted a penalty about five minutes later. think that without the Cameroonian that the goal scoring might be a little bit more difficult to come by as he is on international duty in Qatar at the moment for the World Cup with Cameroon. Again across the back line. Korea Republic International Kang Sang Woo kept himself available as a passing option down that right side. Header with no real idea or purpose behind it from Shanghai Shenhua keeps it in the boots of the men wearing white. Pasagog, by the way, an unused substitute in Cameroon's 1-0 World Cup opening defeat to Switzerland yesterday. <laughs> Yuan Chao, a forward-thinking pass. Runner on the other end of that effort couldn't keep his feet inside the area to the 15th minute here. Nice read, nice step, and an infringement, an impediment, it appeared to be at least, on Zhang Yunin. Right in front of the referee, didn't see enough in it to blow the whistle. And Attic Ben Rowe strips his defender, trying to work that clever one two of the Zhang Yuning. And this time it was easily picked up by the defender. Jubo Jie sprints out of harm's way into the attacking half, but only momentarily. That's going to just get him behind Attic Ben Rowe. Yang Shu, three white kits in front of him, finds the outlet and just moves into open space to receive the pass, working it with a goal scorer, the cross low, center back towards the touchline, Yang Shu keeps it in play. Ooh, the bend on that is exceptional, clearly beating Bai Yang and it needed the second 
Center back to take care of the rest. That is very well shaped. Not the most complicated of challenges in the end. But a step and a read that the Bosnian Samir Memisevic needed to make. There was a lifeline to his teammate. Out Swinger finds a teammate who was being hounded. Kao Tian Yi puts his body right in the path. There's anything but a clear opportunity. Ho Sen quickly flipping the pitch. Trying to catch Shanghai Shenhua. A touch asleep. Body's going to ground. It stays with Shanghai Shenhua. Low cross once more. It is met. That second poke around. Coming off the foot of Yu Han Chao. Nearly was able to sneak that underneath Ho Sen. Frantic at the back for Beijing Guan. It's opening quarter of an hour in this match. Promising from Beijing Guan to the very end. A dummy played by Shang Shi Zhuo, but no one was there to receive it on the other side. And Stanley Menzo is up on his feet, barking out commands. A coaching career that is into its third decade now, Stanley Menzo. That was not offline by much for Zhang Yuning. Plenty of time with Ajax and their various affiliated clubs. Vitesse as well in his native the Netherlands. Got to start with Agov, the last team he suited up for. A brilliant career, the former Ajax man. North of 250 caps for the Dutch Giants. Well, he's going to be a player that is keyed in on today. Eddie Benro just going with Sam on the back of his kit. And a vastly experienced international keeper with a rare mistake, Zung Chung. A low line drive that was nearly very easily taken away. Anytime a prolific goal scorer sees a net that wide open, he is going to try and fence his chances. Well, on the topic of World Cup, Stanley Menzo did feature in one. 1990. Tournament played in Italy. Never really featuring in that. And then in 94, Hans van Brukelen, the Dutch legend between the sticks, retired from international play. Menzo got his chance to be the starter in the 94 World Cup qualifiers, a tournament that would be held in the United States of America, but started with a whimper, a loss and a draw. And from there, he had the gloves taken away didn't even end up cracking that squad that would head to America. Anytime you get a closer zoom, you can see that it is not just 
a shower. It is a torrential downpour. Crossed for Sam, headed back towards the captain. Territory defended, sending Momoti Naibi Jung back. They've taken the sting out of the match, calming things down and working a ton of possession, Beijing Guan. Going to get another effort after the turn, wide in the area. Head up looking for teammates, of which there are three in the box. Attic Benro settles it down. Diagonal run, waits for the left back to arrive. That's a decent looking cross. Shanghai Shenhua pinned the defensive third. All the way back for Bai Yang to his keeper, and they'll go again. Not much for the referee to do through 23 minutes, aside from lift his arm in various directions. I don't know that he's needed to blow the whistle once. Zheng <laughs> Shijia. It's a good step from the six. And again towards the spot, two Shanghai Shenhua defenders there to meet it. Just passing practice right now. Game of keep away. Off balance recovery from the left back. Too much for Sam to do to keep the momentum going forward, but he's helped out. One of these has to be a goal, you'd presume. Kang sang loses his footing. The appeals for a foul in the box would be louder if not for this continued possession. The Bosnian with a brilliant step around. Left footed try, Mimi Shevich. Just over the woodwork. Sent on a season-long loan, Mimishevich was, back in April from Habai. From a competitive standpoint, much more meaningful games, his parent club. You've followed this league for any amount of time this season, you would know that it has, well, it'll have been a miserable season for them. No point trying to put a positive spin on it.
And sliding towards the corner flag was Drew Bojay, knowing there was a hyper aggressive defender waiting for any kind of mistake. His return to the helm. Eugene Guay had several stints 2002 through 2008 in and out as the man in charge 2017 and 2018 he returned Mimishevich. Pass cut out, but not quite intercepted by Yang. And the foot race for the loose ball gets tangled up. Shanghai Shenhua is number nine. Yellow card is going to follow for that challenge once the players are well enough to be back on two feet. Bai Yang knew he was putting himself in harm's way. Yang Shu will be booked. No attempt at the ball. Referee goes to his pocket immediately. Chance for both coaching staffs to relay some instructions. Eugene Guay, the Chinese FA Cup winner with this club back in 2017. Stanley certainly knows a thing or two about being at the helm, and Shanghai Shenhua will be without their number nine in their next match as he accumulates another yellow card. One he really didn't need to make. Challenge, that is. A couple of other players in that similar disciplinary trouble. Both Yu Han Shao and Ju Bo Jie. Should they be booked today, they would be sat for the club's next match on Thursday at Meiju Kutia. Who would ever want to be a center back? It hurts more often than it doesn't. You have to enjoy the suffering that defending requires. It takes a special breed. There's no arguing the manager will be elated with the scoreline, but that's pretty much it. They have been second best to everything else. But sometimes on a poor run of form, you'll take what you can get. Think about the goal that was millimeters away from being out for a goal kick instead of finding the back of the net. It was an unconventional way of finding the back of the goal. Aside from that, it has been a lot of defending. 
Kang Sang Woo. First drive off the right thigh of the center back. 31 minutes in the books here. That's a great cross. Sliding was Chung Shung Lung got by the blue number four. His partner understood the assignment as well. Clever back heel to set that up. Jin Yang Yang saves the day. He saves his keeper from needing to get involved as he's done this time. Some of the restrictions COVID-wise beginning to ease with improved numbers, case counts, and the like. Late in the season, there's a sense of renewed optimism that the next Chinese Super League campaign will have a whole lot more of a normal feel. Supporters back in the grounds. You know the players miss having that energy. You know, the supporters miss being there. Hattig Benro. Mimishevich. Once more with the Bosnian long diagonal ball towards the flag just over the head of the Nigerian. That build fizzles out. We've seen on clear display the more defensive-minded team has been Shanghai Shenhua, but there haven't been that many quality scoring opportunities for the side trailing by goal. Just bunkering down in that back five and letting Shanghai excuse me, letting Beijing Guan stay wide.
I think Benro sheds one. Chung Ching Lung applying the pressure as well to make sure there was nothing. Getting towards his 18. It's been a lot of this left to right and back again. The law of averages alone, all of this possession should eventually open up a chance to be level, and you know that an equalizer would open this match right up for the moment. You know, it's a valuable three point position for Shanghai Shenhua. They will be risk averse so long as they can be. Memishevich. Chijangua. Opens up a sips. Gao Tianyi. Looking up for his number nine. The pass was red. Wang Haitin. Down to the left touch line, and again, it is just stretching the defenders and waiting for more blue shirts to arrive on scene. It's wasteful in the end. It's been the bulk of their offense the transition game. Not moving the ball well either. It's only 65% the passing accuracy. A lot of that is just hopeful passes away from pressure. Zhenghua. It's a good step from Gao Tianyi to force the turnover back in it. Slips that in behind the defender. This will be a cross rather than a shot. Adik Benro thought that was going at goal. That's what he's saying. I'm going in shoulder to shoulder. It was a case of the defender anticipating that contact, feeling it, and throwing himself to ground. Clever little scoop over the top. And the goal scorer knew precisely where the Nigerian wanted to go. Put himself in that position and knew the contact was looming. This time the challenge deemed to be a legal one. 41 minutes having now been complete. Gao Tianyi a little overzealous. Trying to smother the Shanghai Shenhua captain Wu Shi. Player with the most international experience out of anyone on the pitch. 80 caps. 
for country, nine goals. Three times Wu Xi has been named to the Chinese Super League Team of the Year 2015-16 and his most recent in 2019. It's a thundering challenge and that will be the second yellow card of the match and the first shown to a defensive player. It was clumsy, it was late, it was never going to get the ball. And the referee reacts accordingly. That's his first caution of the season. Benro had her back towards Yang Shu, the latter who was not quite fast enough stepping up. Nice step to the right. Chi Zhangguo lays it off. Attic Benro at the back post. Unable to get there before. Meng Yi. He scored his goal. For making a bombing run from right back. It was the wide left player who created it. And that's been all the offense into the final minute before stoppage time in this first half. Finally, a save required out of Zung Chung. For all that possession, all that time on the ball, he has not been tested nearly enough, and he responds with a comfortable save, one he admittedly should make, but did make. Three minutes, the minimum amount of stoppage time to be added for an equalizer or for Shanghai Shenhua to have a picture-perfect opening 45, at least in terms of the score sheet. It's a much better corner. Sam's got to do better. He won't need to be reminded. He hardly had to move. That's how good of a cross it had been. I mean, you could not place that any better. Size advantage, the positioning advantage, it, at the very least, has to be on target from adding Bangro.
Well, it's poor decision making, but it's also poor communication from his teammates for not being more vocal to advise Gao Tianyi that he had Yuhan Cho pressuring him right away. Two of the three minimum minutes of added time have been played. Just as the fourth official had raised his electronic board so there was a chance for Beijing Guan to equalize, they should have done. Now they'll get a second opportunity. Naibi just too much on it. One of the last phases and buildups of this opening 45. Exits with a whimper. Numbers down the right side. The switch into a dangerous position. And that should probably be it for that first half. A glance down at the watch from Tang Shun Ki. Three minutes are through. This ball goes backwards in any way. That will be it. No, no intention from Samir Mamishevich. And the referee decides that that is half time. It would be an opening half that Shanghai Shenhua supporters wouldn't be thrilled of the display per se, but the score line certainly flatters their side. It was a seventh minute goal in transition play, hustling to the byline, keeping it in, and then a little touch from the main man up top, Yang Shu, playing distributor instead of goal scorer, Wang Yi has the one and only goal of this match as the teams will head back to the change rooms and dry off from a rain-soaked first half at halftime. It is Shanghai Shenhua 1, Beijing Guan 0.
Getting settled in for the second half, the final instructions from the coaches have been made. It is all up to the players now with a sea of tactical nuances being issued specifically on the Beijing side of things who have been the better team, but the scoreline does not reflect it. It is just a one goal cushion that currently exists for Shanghai Shenhua. And it was an early goal on the counterattack. Seventh minute go ahead from the fullback, Wang Yi. Samuel adding Beng Ro, he certainly had his chances. Frustrated that this scoreline is what it is. As the second half begins now, Tang Shun Ki blows the whistle. To bring us back to action here in the Chinese Super League with Beijing kicking off first. They wear their all whites today, the road whites, the green letters and numbers on the backs of their shirts, Shanghai Shenhua, and their all blues with the diagonal red sash across the front of their chest, trying to get back in the wind column in what will feel like the first time in ages. It has not been a good run of form. It has not been a good month or two, to be precise. Their last victory, October the 4th, 1-0 over the Henan Songsheng Longmen. After that, draw, draw, lost, draw, loss, loss, loss. Up and down the form table. Not nearly been good enough, so today... They will not care if it doesn't look glamorous. They will take the points however they can get them. Same cannot be said for Beijing, who have been near lights out as they try to climb back up the Chinese Super League table, currently sixth. And only four more rounds to go. So you include today... 15 possible points. And for Beijing to win out, it wouldn't be enough to get to first or second. That is how far ahead Wuhan, Three Towns, and Shandong Taishan are. But they do find themselves only three points back of Shanghai Port for that ever important final Champions League playoff qualifying berth. Four five one for the side up by a goal to nil with so many bodies tucked in behind the ball, especially in this environment, trying to hold out for the win. Vision go on in a four four two with Zhang Yuning and Sam Adig Venro trying to be the offensive spark. There's space with which to operate. It's a nice overlapping run in towards Samuel off the post. Still loose. And I think even had it found the back of the net, it would be brought back. The Nigerian colliding at full speed with his opposing keeper, Zung Chung. Well, it's clearly offside. Good line held by the Shanghai Shenhua defenders. A bit of frustration starting to bubble. Samir Memishevich is the culprit this time.
We have seen this club in so many variations of itself. Most populous city in the country, one of their proudest sporting exploits, which makes runs like this all the more frustrating and difficult to take. Called the Flower of Shanghai for a reason. Nicknamed the Flower of Shanghai. This is this is it. This is the China Derby. Beijing Guan and Shanghai Shenhua. It's a fierce rivalry. It's one that goes back to the mid nineties. the capital and the largest city and their oldest clubs head to head and they'll often get fireworks. 71 years ago, Shanghai Shenhua was founded as a semi-professional club 67 years ago in 1955. Beijing Guan followed suit. Is there an answer on that clipboard from Stanley Menzo? He is a born and bred winner. Won the UEFA Cup, which was what the Europa League used to be known as in 91 and 92 with the Netherlands. UEFA Winners' Cup, 86 87, a three time Eredivisie champion, four time Dutch Cup. Once the Belgian league winners and once the Belgian cup winner, winners with Lierse. Found a gap. Shen Yu Ning has to nobody really. Distribution from midfield to the attacking options just has not been up to scratch. There will be chances for Shanghai Shenhua. The more and more desperate Beijing get, the more bodies they commit forward, and they struck once on the counter, they can do it again. Adding Benro gets to its target out wide. Low cross just by the spot. Patience and the finish. Lazy defending from Shanghai Shenhua as that ball pinballs around the area. You give a pure finisher time. And then more time on top of that, and it will end up in the back of the goal. Zhang Shijiu. Watch this whole thing again. It's clever from Adig Benro. That pass out wide as well. Wang Gung centering it. Look at that. That hesitation. Nobody steps forward. Two defenders right in front. Three had closed down. Nobody could get a body in front of the ball. All the while, screening their keeper would have no idea where that shot was going until it was too late. Can't say it's not deserved. 
been wave after wave of Beijing pressure. And in the 54th minute, well, they do have a leveling goal. And this is where things can truly open the match up. You'll also have two mindsets if you're Eugene Guay. Do you settle in for 40 minutes and try and hang on for a point, or do you force the issue? They can see it again, and you can call it just about done and dusted, which I know is a bold proclamation in this league especially. Some wild finishes. Well, it looks like when you ask the question, which of the two avenues will Shanghai Shenhua take? Maybe it's an inability to try anything else. Less than it is a lack of desire. It's just a build-up clinic from Beijing. Finally solving Zung Chung, now from there, can they pad to the advantage? They still have well over half an hour to do it. Mahoma T, Nai Bi Jong, cross. That's a tough angle for anyone, but a Korean international thought he had a chance. Right footed from the right. You have to be completely on the money. You can't fault him for trying. Mimishevich does so well to get up, keep it away from the defender and create that opportunity for his teammate. It's been a quiet game by Attic Benro standards. Time for that to change. But he is one of those players when you need a goal, you can opt to rely on him. We haven't seen any changes in the second half up until now. the 60 minute mark there was one move off the Beijing bench already bringing Kao Young Jing in and we'll get a double move especially in a match with so much defending the minutes can add up in a hurry Yuhan Xia, one of those to make way. <laughs> so what kind of an impact Leo can have off the bench. 
some energy, some... fresh legs that will allow them to get forward. You know that's so much of the comeback. You can call it a comeback. You can say come back to the lead attempt. Will be done via the counterattack. Zhang Chengdong in for Bai Young, the center back at halftime before that double move, and that's the only change that Stanley Manzo has felt he's needed to make so far. 72% possession. Honestly, it feels like a little bit more than that at times. Nine shots to three. But from those nine shots, Beijing only with two on target. Mamis Shevich. Let's put in a good shift, Kang Sang Woo. It's an imposing low block. It's don't think it's designed to have six of the back, but it looks like a 6 3 1 right now. You'd expect Yang Shu to go the full 90 today if his legs will keep up with it. A, because he is a clinical finisher, and B, because in the 29th minute of the match, he received his fourth caution of the year, and that will see him miss out on the next match. Might as well empty the tanks now. It's a troubling sight, to say the least. The Shanghai Shenhua goal scorer just getting twisted up like a pretzel. See the kinesiology tape already all over his left knee. The teammates make that gesture to the touchline. That's often not a good sign. Not a fun day with the conditions either as we get another look at the equalizing goal. That last minute little layoff, cross back, pinballing around, and that's a bit of desperation defending at that moment when so when Shilin is just haphazardly raising his right leg in the air. If you're hopeful in defense, Probably not a great sign. Just long enough for the substitute to get ready. And then he comes. Gingerly to the bench, and Shanghai supporters will be hoping it's nothing serious. Can't argue that he didn't put in a shift today. Just the sixth appearance of the season for the 31-year-old, Fulang Shisi Aidi. Oh, 
Well, and there goes Zheng Yuning with the half opening laid back. Attic Ben Rowe. Wide play and overlapping runs has been the recipe for success thus far. Nothing created with that particular build. Well, can anything be done? Slow things down. Trip into the touch line. Corner acting as another defender. Clearance grazes of a Beijing leg on the way over the line. This is now all of the substitutes. It is game over. Injuries from here to the line mean that they'll be playing under man. This is all five substitutes. And a smile on the face as he is replaced. I mean, you got to find something to celebrate, I suppose, in a tough match. It'll be the final 23 minutes of this match and a day off on Thursday as well when Shanghai Shenhua face Meiju Kutia for the suspended number nine. For a match where there hasn't needed to be a ton of defending, Emishevich has put in his meters today. Still the men's zone not <laughs> on the same page. Wants to see the pace increased. This has got to be agonizing for both sets of supporters on the or in the Shanghai camp. You're knowing that it's going to be back-footed and desperate all the way to the finish line. For Beijing, it's a matter of how many times can we 
enter the attacking third and come away with nothing. 71% possession still. The Capital Base Club slid across. Oh, well-weighted ball to the left side. Tight angle. Samuel is completely beside himself. Needed much more out of that cross. It's beautiful build-up play. And a bit flat-footed our Shanghai Shenhua. Catching practice for Zheng Cheng. Can't be overly surprised to see the substitutes for Shanghai Shenhua being all around the perimeter of this 4-5-1. All three forwards and both fullbacks. This kind of a game means that they are the most active. And when you're hunting for a winner, getting some energy and attack, never a bad shout. Second, third, and fourth to the loose ball before finally being blasted clear. Memishevich fakes the cross first time, keeps it along the grass, weighted perfectly again. I don't think he'll be going out to buy a lottery ticket after the match. Kang Sangu, you could not draw it up any better if you're Stanley Menzo. You just need some better execution. Tough, tough, tough technique. Popping up just as foot meets ball. And the half volley rises over the crossbar. Shanghai Shenhua 17 minutes away from escaping with the draw. Shevich just a bit too much height on that service looking for the Korean. We'll go right back into the 18. Nice control. Chi Zhangguo. Wang Gong. Oh. Right place you want to put that. Neither Zhang Yuning or Sam Adig Benro could make contact. Yao Tian Yi's turn. Outcome remains the same. Well, it feels like a training session right now where the coach wants to work on defending. Oh, that's a poor touch. That requires the keeper to come out of his goal. Loose and anxious moments for Beijing Guan. Zhu Jianrong, the substitute. 
was nearly the recipient of a very fortuitous bounce, and now he's down holding his ankle. Definitely got tangled up. Hosen comes over to give him a tap on the back. Let's look at it again. You understand in theory what Zhang Chengdong is trying to do there, but he made an absolute meal of it. If they do not go on to get at least a point in this match, Beijing Guan will be absolutely devastated. Oh, look at that strike. Pick that out. Zhang Yuning, yeah, shake off that hand. That was seemingly out of nothing. Back down the field on the restart. Letting it settle and blasting it high over the keeper and just under the bar. That is an absolute rocket from their number nine. Look at it again. It's just simple passing. Nothing too crazy. Very clever touch in first time, top of the 18. That is inch perfect. Clever little layoff and nothing that keeper or any keeper could do to deny a go-ahead goal. And 17 on the season. Zhang Yuning is a massive, massive goal. He had the opening goal in the 2-1 win over Guangzhou City just four minutes into the match. And the very next match for his side, he might just have the winner. Another opportunity for the substitute striker. This time, it's a good stop out of the keeper. Jen Rong just keeping it low, anything towards goal. This is the frustrating part when your side is playing a clear low block defensive system. All of a sudden they need a goal, you start to chase the game and you see the offense open up and you think, where was this for the first 75 minutes? But it often does. take trailing and a bit of desperation to open up a game like this. Surely we're not through with all the drama yet, with still 12 minutes and stoppage time to be played. against the most recent or excuse me a foul against the most recent goal scorer would have been certainly a caution if it was the defender to have infringed that's a bit cheeky it stopped up and there was nowhere for Zhang Yuning to go Samir Memishevich, a pie, but slow to his feet, and he was hand to head, checking to see if he got cut open. He thinks he was elbowed right in the nose.
They'd love a third, but right now, clock is their ally. Those cheap little giveaways aren't helping much. They can get back to the si the style, excuse me, they had been playing the relentless pressure. I know that's easier said than done in tough conditions and at this stage in the match. But if they can get back to that and just keep the ball away from Shanghai Shenhua, there will be no chance for a comeback at this point. Beijing, there's no motivation to do anything but this. Hang on to the ball. They've done their heavy lifting. Trying to walk off a stinger. Push towards the corner. Too much weight behind it. Well, it's a derby that lacks its usual intensity. A ground filled with supporters. Doesn't make the results feel any less satisfying. Though the results still far from guaranteed. Jia Bo. Able to find Wang Hai Tian, but it's not a very long lived possession. Shirts around that loose ball. If she had been the closest Shanghai Shenhua player to it. Eighty fourth minute. How many times have we? Seeing the Bosnian and Herzegovina to Nigerian combination today. Ju Baojie on his best cross. Way too easy for Hosen to receive and promptly roll back out. Zhang Gua. If 
Finally plays it out wide. Controlled and held up. Jubo J going into his man. Foul is awarded. Be the end of the line for Gao Tianyi. Wang Zemin in, in the 86th minute. He'll get a five minute run and try and help close this match out. By my count, just the second substitution of the match. First within the realm of open play, Zhang, Zhang Dong had come in at halftime, but that was it prior to now. It's been a solid performance, one that's not done yet, but one that has Beijing well on their way to moving level with Shanghai Port for third in the table. About as animated as we've seen Stanley Menzo yet today. <laughs> Shanghai Port not in action today. There are a few matches, though they are not featured. They do take to the pitch tomorrow. Saturday evening clash against the Tianjin Tigers. Similar sort of position to Shanghai Shenhua in that table. Stuck in the middle. High lofted ball out to make the catch Zung Chung and we'll need to look forward quickly. Two and a half minutes and stoppage time, that's it. Controlled off the thigh, overlapping run comes when Jia Bo. Cross blocked, keeps it in play, tried to cycle it back. He was looking for Ju Bo Jie. On a wire crossing and that is where they will stall out. It's officially time for the cramps to set in. Minutes from full time. Crazy how it's like clockwork, isn't it? Beijing will look ahead to Wednesday for their next match. Will not be a walk in the park. Zhu Jiang will be next up for them. They would be expecting nothing but the full complement of points tomorrow against Habai, therefore. A draw doesn't separate them in the table, but a win certainly could do a number. Might just be a little bit too late for Meiju to climb into that third spot, but from there it is a five club race for third. Just five rounds remaining. 
The injured Beijing player stretchered off the pitch. We can resume. Six minutes. Green number on the fourth official's board. That is what will be tacked on here. Some referees would give the foul or give the caution for the challenge. But it's Zheng Yuning who is booked for delaying the restart of play. Shanghai Shenhua across towards the top of the penalty area. They'll be disappointed with the result. They'll be disappointed with the performance. They would be elated, however, if they could draw level. The paperwork not yet submitted. Stanley Menza wants to make a couple of stoppage time changes. 9B is the first, and Sam is the second. The left back and the left forward. Yohana, he exits. Jean Tian also comes in. Well, no, excuse me, enters. 19 and 18, both on the pitch. And 90 seconds of stoppage time have been managed. Ju Jian Rung into the back of the legs and sees yellow. He's trying to. Offer a helping hand to Zhang Chengdong, who is not interested. That's clumsy. Well, worth the yellow. It's a frustration foul as much as anything. Oh, through the legs and into the penalty area, trying to do the same thing. Turned one defender inside out. It's Jin Yang Yang who was hopefully in the substitute forward's mind. The next to be nutmegged. It is a corner. Oh, fantastic stop, and Mamie Shevich will see that one in his nightmares. Loose ball popped free to him. Eyes lit up and just could not put it on target. That's another brilliant set play. The Bosnian denied not once but twice. Fantastic reaction from Zung Chung. Chipped up high. Jin Yang Yang. It's a little bit of space back, but it is still Beijing pushing for a third. Two thirds of the way through stoppage time now. These counterattacks have to be fruitful for Shanghai Shenhua. It's a very promising start. Wu Shi to the right side, crossing towards the spot. Two players go up for it and a harmless, if not wasteful, header. The second time it dropped. Ju Jin Rong, it was right there for the taking. Carelessly given away. That's a present. 
for Shanghai Shenhua. Cut back to the middle end, fouled into the final minute of stoppage time. Zheng Yuning already on a yellow. Jin Chung runs over, places the ball into the area, turning, firing. Nice job on the volley, but offside. On a set play like that, it's either a calamitous defensive mistake or a player in an offside position by quite a large margin for a free volley like that to be taken. Also booked for his troubles on top of it all, so he'll be sat for the preceding match, Zhu Jianrong. One final key defensive stop. We're through the six into the seventh minute of added time and Beijing looking for one more goal to enhance the goal differential. Referee glances down at his watch, shouts from the Beijing touchline that that should be full time. Referee adding just a little bit more on for the fouls and the substitutions. Studs up on the calf. Wouldn't call it malice, but that's a cautionable type of tackle. Well, it was not pretty, but it does not matter. Three massive points for Beijing Guan on the day, taking them into a tie for third position in the Chinese Super League table for that final. Champions League playoff round position. They were down by a goal to nil after 45 minutes with Shanghai Shenhua in a transition moment. Danny Wang Yi scoring in the seventh minute, but it is Stanley Menzo's men who finished the day on top. Goals from Zhang Shizhe in the 54th minute and Zhang Yuning in the 76th. See the visitors win the China Derby as Beijing defeats Shanghai Shenhua. I've been Adam Jenkins for our entire crew. We say so long for now in the Chinese Super League at full time. It is Shanghai Shenhua 1, Beijing Guan 2.首先总结一下这场比赛吧。呃，今天比赛来之不易，来之不易，然后对手在领先的情况下，我们去扳两个球，然后再取得胜利，真的很不容易。我要感谢我的队友。嗯，那想问一下，你作为年轻球员，觉
可以了吗？呃，首先总结一下这场比赛吧。呃，赛前就知道这场是一场非常困难的比赛，然后球队从上到下都非常努力，呃，全力以赴了。呃，可惜没拿到我们想要的结果吧。嗯，自己今天这场比赛进了一个球，啊，是你这个赛季的第一个进球。呃，对，这呃，这个也是我第一个在中超联赛第一个进球吧，然后非常开心。呃，首先也要感谢俱乐部、教练组和队员们一直以来对我的信任吧，但是还是很可惜，今天没拿到呃想要的上分。嗯，呃，据说近期咱们球队的骨改是有一些进展的。作为球员来说，呃，想问一下你目前球队的一个气氛是怎么样？在经历这个处罚以后，呃，大家是一个什么样的心情？我们不管呃呃骨改是怎么样的，反正每个球员呃上场会全力以赴，然后打好接下接下来的比赛。谢谢。谢谢
媒体朋友们，大家晚上好！刚刚结束的二零二二中国平安中国足球协会超级联赛第二十七轮第二百四十场上海申花与北京国安的比赛中，上海申花以一比二负于北京国安。本场比赛最佳球员是北京国安十号张玉宁。现在开始赛后新闻发布会。先出席的是北京国安队主教练斯坦利门佐先生，有请主教练点评本场比赛。This is what we expected. This this kind of match. 其实今天这场比赛这种进展呢，也是我们有预料的。What we didn't hoped and expected that they they were one no up so soon. 呃，只是呢，没有预判到他们那么快就能进球，一比零领先了。So they could play their game, make it compact, and wait for the for the counter. And the space behind our our defense. 这样的话呢，他们就更容易打他们想打的那种防守反击，把球队收缩，然后等着打我们后卫身后的空当。So the first half was very difficult for us. We couldn't find the space between the lines. 这样的话呢，在上半时对我们来说就比较困难，我们很难在线间找到空当。And then you have to do something else. You have to do to you have to be more opportunistic. 这样的话呢，可能就逼迫我们要去做更多的事情，也就是说要去更乐观一些。That's what we start the first half with, or second half with, and then you see you can keep them on their own half, winning the second balls. 下半时我们主要就是要在对方的半场去控制二点球。You score a good one-one. 然后我们进了个球以后，呃，一比一打平。But still, you're playing with a lot of risk in your back because they still play the same way. 就在这种情况下，对方还是按上半时的打法在打。这样呢，我们呃后卫身后的空当还是比较有有对我们来说是比较有危险的。When you score the two one, you know they have to come a little bit. 我们必须去有一定的冒险。完了以后呢，打我们进了第二个球以后，对方被迫就出来了一些。And then you see, then we we got some even more chances. I think Naidi and Mami got two great chances. So, it led to later on, we Naibi Naibi Jiang and Mami both won two particularly chance to score goals. And of course, at the end, they also going to play more opportunistic, and yeah, they get some chances, yes, opportunities. 完了以后，他们也是呃想利用一些机会，呃，创造了一些机会。A great and a big compliment to this team. The way 90 minutes they play with a knife on their, on their, on their, on their, how you call it? Throat. Throat. Yeah. Neck. Yeah. 呃，我要特别的高度赞扬我这个球队，因为等于在九十分钟的时间里，呃，脖子上被人架着一把刀的状态下，我们一直在拼搏。In possession to have to play on a small pitch, I think we played uh, uh, 30 meters, 40 meters from their goal. 呃，尤其是在这种特殊的情况下，我们整个压缩的很小，就在一个三四十米的区间里面，不断的反复的去去打比赛。With a lot of space in your back， 呃，身后呢却有很大的空当。And they managed to win this game, and for me, it's a, it's a big compliment. The players who came in， 在这样危险困难的情况下，我们坚持了九十分钟，包括后来上场的替补球员。Did a great job, so yeah, 
他们也做了很棒的工作。所以我对全队的表现特别满意，呃，要赞美，要赞扬他们。谢谢。下面是媒体提问环节，请媒体进行提问，提问前请自报媒体单位。谢谢。现场媒体是否有提问？媒体提问环节结束。北京国安赛后新闻发布会到此结束，谢谢大家。稍后进行上海申花赛后新闻发布会。谢谢主持。好的，发布会继续。下面出席的是上海申花主教练吴金贵先生，有请主教练点评本场比赛。呃，队员们非常努力了，呃，那么在取得领先的情况下，呃，确实在僵持了那么长时间。那么、呃、从我们队来讲，呃，防守还做得不错，但是呢，我们防守同时呢，呃，进攻上面我缺少人员，呃，反不上去，所以这样呢。呃，对手的这个防守的压力不大，啊，然后呢，就是连续的呃，对我们发起进攻，所以我们在呃防守的上面，只要出现一些呃漏洞，对方就会抓住这样的机会。那么总体上面，呃，我们球员们在场上啊，每一个人都呃竭尽全力，啊，尽全力，呃，整个比赛也看到呃他们在场的表现，啊，但是实力上面有差距。啊，我觉得也正常的很，啊，那么最近呃，等可能人员伤病恢复以后会好一些，啊，但是我们还会一如既往的呃，全力以赴去打好后面的比赛。谢谢。下面是媒体提问环节，请媒体进行提问，提问前请自报媒体单位。谢谢。第一个问题。上海东方体育日报记者有两个问题啊，第一个是这场比赛虽然输了，就像刚才您说的啊，就是相比之前的比赛，我们在精神面貌上发生了很大的变化。就比赛结束之后回到更衣室，你跟队员有没有说过什么？谢谢。呃，我对你们讲，就是说，呃，现在呃队伍处于一个困难时期，那么在人员不整的情况下，能够打成这样还是非常不错的。每一个人呢也是呃尽力了，那么在。呃，这样二十多天的时间，呃，一路奔袭，一路那个那个旅行，所以呢，呃，造成一个呢，就是训练时间不够，另外呢，就恢复时间不够，所以在这个进攻上面也好，防守上面也好，啊，没有完整的一堂课去去进行训练。那么昨天也是，呃，本来可以那个彩场，但是大雨也是影响了我们这个训练，啊，呃，这是到了这里以后，呃，就没法训练。
那么当然这些都不是呃理由啊，都不是理由。呃，我们呢，呃，这个队伍困难，呃，这些困难都不会被这些困难吓倒，啊，呃，每一个队我相信都会碰到这样那样的困难，啊，其实从总体上来讲，今天打的还是非常不错的，在这些人员上面，大家看到，呃，我跟他们讲，对手可能防守线上一个外援起到了关键的很很关键的作用，是吧？五号。然后中场两个进攻的队员，啊，十一号、十七号，一个江友祥，啊，呃，还有外援，确实是，呃，对我们这个整个防守线的压力很大。但是呢，总体上面对我们防守这个还是比较满意的。所以我跟队员们讲，呃，就是输一场比赛正常的很，是吧？因为在最后呢，还是在关键的时候、关键的时刻、关键的位置，呃，这个一定要，呃，球员们这个呃能力决定的，啊，所以我也是。觉得就是也非常，呃，就是心心疼这批球员啊，大家很努力，最后，呃，没有保住呃这个领先的，啊，呃，所以队员们也是呃互相之间都在鼓劲啊。呃，第二个问题就是钱建给这场比赛进了大名单，呃，但是却没有上场。上一轮联赛他也没出场，能介绍一下他的情况吗？谢谢。因为他在前面几场比赛中间，呃，一场比赛拉伤，那么一直在恢复，一直恢复。那么因为本来如果不下雨的话呢，我们会让他呃打个呃二十分钟或者半个小时，但是下雨天怕他那个呃再次这个这个这个呃在伤病地方再次那出现。呃，问题，那我们也呃也怕这样的，因为本来人员不整，而且这样的球队，呃，北京国安总体上面实力上面确实也是、呃、比我们强，那比我们强，所以我们还是保险起见，呃，让他那个、呃、进行这个这个调整，适应一下啊，所以没有派他上场、嗯。谢谢。现场媒体是否还有提问？媒体提问环节结束。上海申花与北京国安赛后新闻发布会到此结束，谢谢大家，我们下场见。谢谢，谢谢。谢谢